Hey, what's going on my friend? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and today I'm going to share with you 12 signs that you are going through an amazing spiritual awakening process and just might not know it. That's the situation with a lot of people who reach out to me. And why do they reach out to me? Who is this guy? Well, I'm someone who's been going through this awakening process for a long time, over a decade. And about seven, eight years in, I started sharing my life and my experiences on YouTube. And I was fortunate and blessed to find out there were so many people of all ages, all walks of life, all different ideologies and religious backgrounds all over the globe that relate to this fundamental transformation process that I was talking about. And I've had the blessing and the luxury of speaking with literally thousands of you guys over the years. And this video is a compilation of the 12 most fundamental common signs that indicate you are going through this blossoming process. But some of them might surprise you. You'll relate with them if you are, but they don't always, they're not very intuitive. A lot of people have ideas of what it's like to, to wake up and the actual experience of it is usually quite different. Sign number one, you're going through a lot of drastic ups and downs on all levels within your life. Maybe prior to whatever it was that catalyzed you into this awakening experience, there was indeed a semblance of predictability and structure within your, your worldview, within your actual life, within your relationships, within your career, within your sense of self, and now, there's all of these ups and downs. You feel unbalanced, out of sorts, just random. Some days you probably feel better than ever, more connected, more deeply connected than ever, more optimistic than ever, smarter, more like you have more access to your intelligence than ever before. And then yet, conversely, on the other side of the spectrum, there are days where you feel bleak and melancholy and hopeless and life is like throwing you all these annoying curveballs. There's so much uncertainty in your life and you don't have that faith, you don't have that confidence, you don't have that hope, it's gone. The, 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 the clouds have covered the sky, the sunshine is out of sight and here you are left in this complete contrast from where you were 20 minutes ago. What's happening? Am I bipolar? I thought I was, I actually went to the doctor and they said, yeah, you are. <laughs> I wasn't. I was going through the same process that you were going through. And your ups and downs are actually benefiting you. Because the downs are you being more conscious of the things you've been carrying. And you're allowing them to bubble up to the surface so you can transcend them. And then have those up days. Every time you go down, you're growing more. You're discovering more within yourself so that you can shoot up into that higher octave of existence, higher and higher and higher and higher. But if you weren't aware of that, you might think you're going a bit crazy. Number two is familiar and once stable situations on all levels in your life are changing, shifting, and I'll say it, breaking down. Maybe it's your career. Maybe you had these plans. I went to college, now I'm a teacher, and I'm going to retire and you know earn this sort of salary and save my money and build up my 401k and this here's my life. And all of a sudden it's like there's there's things going on within your workplace that there's shifts being made. Maybe it, there's the possibility of your whole school getting shut down, lack of funding, and, and there's like, oh my goodness, what the heck am I gonna do now? My whole life was just sort of like, like already paved out for me, and now there's a fork in the road. What the heck? That's just one example. It's the same thing with your relationships, your marriages, your friendships, your co, all of your relationships that might have been like, yeah, well, I've had this group of friends, we've been digging each other for the last 20 years, high school buddies, and all of a sudden I'm seeing them differently, in a completely different light. And there just seems to be so much change happening in all areas of your life. And it can be maddening because it's quick, it's very real. There are changes that are gonna cause you to look within and ask why is this happening and, and uncover more of yourself. But if you just start going through life, feeling up and down randomly, things in your life are falling apart, you'd think, what the heck is going on? Why is this happening? It's just, it's a shift. You're going through a personal shift. 
And this personal shift, this individual inner shift is playing out metaphorically in your life circumstances. These things are changing for the better. These things are fading away so that what you really want, that you're able to achieve, have room to come in. There's a method to the madness even if you haven't seen it yet. Number three is time distortions. Maybe you're, you are finding that when you get into something you really enjoy, maybe it's just journaling or walking or painting or riding your bike, you're just like time goes away. Or maybe when you're doing your, you're playing your guitar and you're in your creative work, time vanishes. Maybe when you're with a, a, a friend that you're really jiving with and connecting with, the t you can't believe how fast the time has passed. It's almost like you skipped time. Other times when you're having one of those down days as I was talking about, you might feel like it's a 25 year slow snail's pace journey just to get through one day. Your perception of time will shift as you shift, as you wake up to the fact that time is not static, it's not a real thing, it's a byproduct of the state of consciousness you embody which now is all over the place. Number four, and I think a lot of you will chuckle and then, and then probably do one of these, like, oh yeah. Being around people, especially those that press your buttons, like your family sometimes, becomes difficult. Like energetically, physically, draining, challenging. Uh, it's a whole, it's a more of a intense experience is being around the energies, the moods, the intentions, the opinions of other people. All of that is having more of an impact on you and you're more sensitive and open than ever and it just is almost like you wish you could shield yourself and cloak yourself in some kind of protective shield because you feel subject to the energies of those around you, especially those that press your buttons. But it's not that, it's not, no one's doing anything wrong. It's that you're at a new level of sensitivity and those that are pressing your buttons are doing you a favor. They're helping uncover unresolved stuff within you, actually, even though it can really seem on all levels from them, it's, uh, it's just more information to that within you that is reacting to those energies instead of accepting and allowing them. It's just a way to really help you with this self unfoldment process but the experience of it can seem very odd when you're invited to the annual Christmas party or whatever and you you're feel like, oh, I don't wanna go. I don't feel up to that. I can anticipate it being emotionally chaotic and I don't want to have anything to do with that. Normal. Number five, you might find there, there might be a difficulty finding joy and pleasure and a fulfillment in things that once satisfied you. I spoke to a woman, Wendy, not too long ago who was a teacher. She was a teacher and she, I imagine she got into teaching because she was passionate. There was a real passion. I said, I'm gonna be a teacher. I'm gonna go to college. I'm gonna help people. I'm gonna help shape the minds of children and that's gonna be amazing. And it was amazing until now her awakening has hit. And now it's like, I'm not clicking with these kids. I wanna just go home early. I wanna call in sick. I don't want to do this. The joy, the magic, the connection, the fulfillment is gone. Nothing's changed. Same group of kids, same situation, but I have changed. My expectations on my life have changed and therefore things that once satisfied no longer do. But then for a time there's this void, like now what do I do? I used to do a lot of this and it was like what I did to feel good and happy and that was what I was into and now it's like, it's not working. No matter what I do, no matter what I tell myself, maybe I should be more grateful. Maybe I should really get out of my head and, 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 and you know, change my perspective. It's not gonna work. It's that whatever those things are, are they're gonna phase out. 
And that's okay, even though it can be scary because what will replace it has not been presented itself to you and it can seem like things are just leaving and sort of the scary void of melancholy wells up and you feel lost and like you don't know what to do with yourself. It's okay. It's okay, you're just changing so quickly, so fast that your life is almost struggling to keep up with it. But, but when there's the time for your life to start to reciprocate and catch up with the pace at which you're now evolving, it'll be just uh, an abundance of amazing surprises. If you find something like that in your life is phasing out, it's because something 500 times better is trying to come in. It's ripe. It's ready to come in. Let go of that which no longer satisfies you and trust that something will come to replace it and it will fulfill you at a level that you're just not used to. An amazing, deep, beautiful level, I promise you. Number six, you're probably wondering, what the heck is going on with my diet? Uh, I've had like the same diet for as long as I can remember and now my staple foods are making me feel horrible and sick to my stomach and I don't want them. I don't even want to look at them. The sight of them makes me crazy and yet these other foods I never really ate that much. They just seem so intriguing, so inviting, so delicious and you might find that keeps changing on you. Like, ah, okay, for whatever reason, my taste buds, uh, taste buds have adapted and they no longer want this, they want this, great. Okay, cool, I can settle into this diet, I can settle into this routine and lifestyle, and then it's like, whoop, it happens again, and again, and again, and again. What the heck is going on? You might wonder. The process you're going through is very dynamic. There's a lot going on within your emotional body, within your physical body, within your psyche, within your life, varying degrees of stress, catalyzed by all this different stuff going on in your life, and your body will know what it needs to support it on that day, in that moment, for that meal. And you'll just become more in tune with it, and as long as you just stop trying to find the diet for you, and eat what seems obviously ideal on that day, you'll be good to go. It's normal and it will balance out. Number seven, you might feel called to pursue something, called to a purpose that seems not like you. Going back to Wendy, a client of mine, she was a teacher and she has sort of a conservative lifestyle or People around her are very conservative minded, her up until this point as well, and yet she is so drawn to the subtle art of energy healing, Reiki healing, words that were like taboo to her and those around her, and yet she can't deny a, a genuine, a childlike fascination, an intrigue, an interest, a passion for these this new thing that's like, whoa. Take me for example. I was a personal trainer. I love to work out. I love fitness. And I felt called to talk about spiritual awakening, kundalini, ascension, all the stuff I talk about on my YouTube channel. I felt called to talk about it. I, was, I wondered, how are people gonna react when they see this is what I'm now suddenly up to and into and doing? But I couldn't deny it. Wendy couldn't deny it. You can't deny how you feel about something, that is real, that is honest, that is your soul saying, listen, mind, I know you don't understand this yet, but you feel this way for a reason. Trust that reason, go for it. It is what's going to enrich your life and, and replace those things fading out, even if it takes your mind a little bit of time to kind of jump on board, that's okay. Number eight, you might find that you have developed a, a random, strong, out of the blue interest, obsession almost, with some type of spiritual topic. For me, I remember I, was, I would drive 
quite a distance to get to where I worked, about a half hour. Maybe that's not long for some of you. I had a half hour commute to work and I would always stop at this restaurant and get some like carry out food and chill there. And for like a month straight during my earlier awakening, I would sit there on my phone and obsessively get lost. The time would fade away when I would read about near death experiences. I was reading about people who had crossed over, had died, clinically dead, and five minutes later, they woke up and had this like amazing tale that reading these people's stories just gave me chills. It opened me up to like the belief that there is indeed more than meets the eye, more than I can conceive of. A spiritual dimension indeed is real. There'll be something that produces that same effect. I call it the binge watching effect. Like if you ever get really sucked into a new TV series that's been out a long time and you find yourself watching five to 10 episodes per day, you know it's time to go to bed but you can't stop yourself from watching, you'll have that with something in, in the spiritual, spirituality sort of a genre. Something that's keeping you occupying your mind. That's all you wanna do is read and learn and watch that kind of stuff. Why, where did this come from, who knows? Number nine is constant, chronic uncertainty. You're shifting into a new way of going through life, more faith-based, more intuition-driven. And as you do this, you accelerate yourself forward towards all the things that you have the potential of achieving in this lifetime quickly and that involves a lot of change a lot of a lot of change and you can't deny this change there's no time to rest and recoup and stabilize and normalize and take a vacation take a hiatus because once you've changed a little bit you change again and again and again and once you shift this big thing in your life might take some time and you reap the benefits and oh wow that was a that was a that was a good result with that one and something else comes and there's this constant, non-stop, forward momentum of change, but it's positive change. It's an accelerated expansion of who you are, being manifested within you and in your life on all levels. So, is it fast? Yeah. Is there a lot of change? Yeah. Does it take time to get used to the uncertainty? Heck yeah, I'm still doing it myself, but it's all because you're improving your life so quickly that you're just not used to the speed. But over time, you become comfortable with it. You learn how to become sort of the calm within the storm. There's a sense of stability, but it's not in your life. And that's the message. Your life is always going to be changing and faster and faster and faster as we go forward. But there is stability. There is certainty within yourself that you your awareness, your consciousness is the constant. And sometimes we need things to speed up a little bit for us to stop looking out there for answers and start coming within because that's where the real answers are. Number 10, there will be even within this time of uncertainty and dramatic change in your life, a sense, a very real intimate sense of support from however you want to label it's up to you the universe god yourself sometimes you just feel supported by your life uh, there's a sense that you are going through something very deep and real and profound even though things in your life are kind of in flux are a lot in flux in spite of your ups and downs and the comings and goings and changes within your life, within you there is a sense of knowingness that it's for a greater purpose, it's going to work out really well for you in the end, and that there's a real important reason why you are going through this right now. Some people literally will start to get like omens or synchronicity from their life where some people see the same number they see a certain number and whenever they see it they feel at peace they feel okay they feel trusting they're validated they're con there's confirmation that yeah you're okay you're on track i know how it looks you're fine you're gonna do it you're good 
Some people start to have dreams or just uh, there's many different types of signs from spirit. I'll say as a blanket term for divine guidance that you are now more open to because of your sensitivity. That same sensitivity that makes it difficult to be around people is opening you up to the higher realms and planes of existence that you are part of, you are from. You descended from that and now you can reconnect with it. And regardless, it'll give you a sense of trust that ultimately everything is unfolding perfectly for you. Number 11, a sense that it's not just you that you're not the only one being affected by this change. You might start to see your own process, your own transformation, your own metamorphosis playing out in other people's lives that you know. And you can sense they don't really know what the heck's going on either. They're not aware of it either. You can see it happening on the world stage, on the news, out, just out there in the world's affairs. They're ref it's reflective. It's going through the same symptoms on a macrocosmic level that you are from your own microcosmic level. There's, there's ups and downs. There's fluctuations. There's an influx of higher vibration, more divine-like ideas and inspirations and creations and just things that reflect that light. There's also an acceleration of darkness, a, a, a collapsing of old structures, a, a going thank goodness, of a lot of things that have kept people at a, at a stable and yet very low state of awareness that's all changing and you sense it. You, see, you can feel it. You know you're part of it. And it's freaking mind-blowing to ponder, I know. And yet it's happening. And yet you believe it. You resonate with what I'm saying. You feel it already in yourself. And you know that you are living in a very, very, very unique time in history. Number 12, a sense that you came to help with this. That you came here at this time for a reason. There's a purpose to your life. There's a purpose to this awakening. There's a purpose to you and you know it. You might not have found it yet. You might not know how, you just know. But the more you allow this process to do its thing and remain in that space of trust, it will be revealed to you. And that's what's gonna give you a level of completion, a level of feeling at home with who you are when you align fully with your purpose, your role in this incredibly grand unfoldment that you are helping with. Your ups and downs, you're raising your vibration. You raising your frequency on an energetic level is rippling and radiating out there into the collective. So you are one speck of sand in this massive mound, uh, this beach, and you're starting to shine more shine more like a diamond and you're illuminating the other specks of sand so hopefully at some point we can build a really nifty sandcastle or something. <laughs> Not the greatest metaphor but I think you catch my drift. If all of what I just said, if you're still here, that in itself is a sign. What are you doing listening to me? What the heck? What am I talking about? Do, am, I, am I making any sense? To you I am. Because you feel it. You're tapped in to this frequency of change. You're part of this frequency of change. Okay, now you know. And now that you know, get excited. <laughs>